light? Is it a wave or a particle? Can an elephant be a wave? Can your cat be dead and alive at the same time? For centuries, the greatest minds in the world argued over the fact whether light is a wave or a particle. While some scientists, like Newton and Descartes, said light was a stream of particles. Others said light was a wave. Propagating in a medium called ether. In 1800, Thomas Young showed that light behaves like a wave by passing light through a double slit to obtain diffraction patterns. But this theory failed when scientists tried to prove various experimental results such as intensity distribution of different wavelengths of light emitted by a black body and the photoelectric effect. In 1930, German physicist Ernest Max Planck proposed a new model for light, which solved many unsolved problems. And in 1921, Einstein won the Nobel Prize for explaining the photoelectric effect using this model of light. According to Planck, light was both a wave and a particle, and was made out of discrete packets of energy called quanta. Earlier, scientists thought that energy was continuous and can be divided infinitely. But Planck's idea of quantized light contradicted this view. His theory, which we call the quantum theory, opened the doors to a new field in physics called quantum physics. Furthermore, it led to many mysteries in physics, some of which yet unsolved. It's a field that is comparatively more complicated than classical physics and deals with things like motion, forces and energy of subatomic particles. But it is breathtakingly interesting. You, me, even the computer you are watching this video through are all a part of this quantum melody. Flawlessly perfect. Unless you meet who or whatever that produced this melody It'll be a bit difficult to understand which instrument plays which part or what major or minor chord that makes up this tune. Well, the good news is we aren't completely lost in this tune. We have advanced and most of the fundamental laws that basically define our universe are being unveiled. In 1923, Louis de Broglie proposed that not only light but any object, a tennis ball, you, Whatever has both wave and particle properties, this is called wave-particle duality. According to de Broglie, you can calculate the wavelength of anything, if you know its momentum. Wavelength is equal to the ratio of Planck constant to momentum. This equation suggests the smaller the object, larger the wavelength. So in order to observe wavelengths, scientists had to use the smallest known particle, the electron. In 1925, J.P. Thomson and Clinton Davison proved that electron was a wave by using the double slit experiment. Similar to the way, Young proved the wave nature of light. This was a very important result as it led to the development of electron microscopes. By further studying the electron, scientists discovered many mysterious properties of electrons. We now call them quantum properties. The strangeness of these properties is how hard it is for us to believe them. Our imagination is based on our experience on the three-dimensional world we perceive. It is the reality for us, but quantum world is a different reality where different rules apply. Therefore. We cannot visualize quantum properties of phenomena using everyday examples. Even the wave particle duality is like that. One of such quantum properties is the spin of electrons. When we say spin in electrons, it is totally different from the spin of a top or the rotation of the earth. Spin is the orientation of the magnetic field of an electron. The spin can be up or down or in any direction when we observe it. But when we are not observing, it can be in both up and down states simultaneously. We call this quantum superposition. Schrodinger argued that the idea is absurd 
using his famous thought experiment known as Schrodinger's cat experiment. Can you be dead and alive at the same time? Well, I'm not talking about the feeling you get when you sit for an exam. I mean, literally be alive and dead at the same time. Well, Schrodinger's imaginary cat had to go through this thought experiment until scientists understood that quantum world is different. Another interesting property of quantum-sized objects is uncertainty. That is, if we know its accurate position, we cannot determine its momentum. And if we know its momentum, we cannot pinpoint its actual position. Quantum entanglement Entanglement is the idea that two electrons can be paired such that one's behavior affects the other. Then the two electrons will be interdependent, no matter how far apart they are. Electrons can pass through obstacles without elapsing time. This is a sort of teleportation. We call this quantum tunneling. As you all know, IC are getting smaller and smaller day by day. But there is a practical limitation to it. At some point, it'll stop. And that means our computers will hold at a certain processing speed. This is not cool at all. But thanks to Schrodinger's cat, we know most of these particles are capable of existing in two states at once. Here, qubits come into play. Qubits, unlike typical bits, can hold 1 and 0 simultaneously. What? But hold on a little longer and bear with me. This means when two bits gave only four possibilities, just using one qubit, we achieve the same result. You know what this means? It means that quantum computers are the next Promax supercomputers. They are capable of solving complicated problems faster than the fastest classical computers. Quantum supremacy? Well, that's another fancy word to say that quantum computers won over classical computers. Thanks for watching.